You're watching the NWR Resources Conference, November 2020. On the line, we have Jeff Quartermain from Perseus Mining. Perseus is aiming to become a 500,000 ounce per year gold producer. The company has built and operates two gold mines in West Africa, Etikan in Ghana and Sisingwe in Cote d'Ivoire. First gold from its third mine, Yaore, which is also in Cote d'Ivoire, is on track for December 2020. The company has recently completed the acquisition of Exor resources, which includes acquiring Exor's portfolio of exploration properties situated in northern Cote d'Ivoire. Jeff Quartermain is with us today. He is the Managing Director and CEO of Perseus. Jeff has more than 25 years of experience in senior financial and strategic management roles with ASX and TSX listed resource companies. He was previously Perseus's CFO before transitioning to lead the company in 2013. Over to you, Jeff, with the presentation. Okay, well, thanks very much. Now, I think you haven't left too much for me to say about Perseus, but anyway, I'll do my best. Um, welcome, uh, everybody, to this uh, presentation, and thanks for joining us. Uh, I guess as clients of NWR, you would have seen a fair bit of material being published uh, over the years, um, as we're probably one of NWR's oldest clients. Nevertheless, what I'd like to do today is to uh, give you a bit of an update on where we are at the moment, but more particularly focusing on where we're going to into the future. Uh, now, to, to start off, for those of you who are less familiar with the company, I'll run through a very uh, quick overview of where we are. And then um, I will uh, just talk about recent performance, but then, as I say, focusing on what, where the company is heading to beyond, uh, beyond this year. So without further ado, uh, going through the various cautionary statements. But um, for those of you who aren't familiar with the company, we are a, uh, an Australian company. We're, we're based in Perth. We're listed on the Australian Stock Exchange and on the Toronto Stock Exchange. But all of our operations are located in West Africa. Uh, we're a multi-mine, multi-jurisdictional uh, operation. And uh, we're actively involved in not only production, but also development and exploration as well. We are aiming, uh, as was said in the introduction, to become a 500,000 ounce uh, per year producer. We're very, very close to that. In fact, we're only a couple of uh, weeks away, I would say, or a few days away from actually starting up our third mine. So uh, well and truly on the path to, the, to achieving that particular outcome. We're in a very strong position financially, clearly helped by the recent strength in the gold price. But nevertheless, uh, our balance sheet is in very good shape and we're into a position where in the very short term, we'll, we'll be able to start looking at, at a dividend stream for shareholders. But having worked in West Africa for some time now, we understand the absolute importance of having a strong social license to operate. And for us, this is more than just the latest trend, ESG and, and the like. This is something that we've been doing day in, day out, ever since we've been in, in country. And I think it stood us very in very good stead in terms of being able to work in this part of the world very successfully. Now, part of the reason for that, I guess, is that we've got a fairly experienced board and management team who have been uh, through the hoops a bit and have learned a lot of lessons along the way. So it, we are in, in, in very good shape as a company. And as that slide says, it's a compelling investment opportunity. Just very briefly, I mean, we, we are, you know, the share price is down a little bit from what it's showing on this slide. But nevertheless, we're in, we are in, in a very strong position, notwithstanding the fact that we're in the the final stages of a major investment program, we're still uh, pretty much cash neutral. So uh, we don't have too much to be concerned about on that front. We've got a very strong share register of extremely high quality institutions uh, and investors, um, of which about 40 odd percent are based in North America, about 30 odd percent in, in Europe, and the rest of them are in Australia. So it's, a, it's an international company and one that's been progressively uh, getting better over, over recent years. Now, um, you know, one of the things we have been focusing on very, very heavily is, is becoming an extremely reliable uh, performer, a producer that investors can invest in and know full well that we're going to deliver on our promises. Now, in the September quarter, we were just, just passed, we had a fairly strong quarter, produced around 69,000 ounces at a weighted average all inside cost of about $964 an ounce. So that gave us the wherewithal to generate a fairly healthy cash margin given where we are uh, in, in the gold price cycle. In fact, we generated roughly 43 million of national cash flow during the quarter, which was uh, very helpful at a time when indeed we are in a heavy investment program. Uh, this slide here says that uh, the AORI development was 85% complete at the end of the quarter, and that was true, but I can assure you we moved 
on a long way from there, and I'll speak about that in a moment. But the one thing is that we are well and truly on track for delivering that guidance that's shown there, 125 to 139,000 ounces for this half year uh, at 942, uh, a little over a thousand. Um, if things stay on track as they are, we'll certainly be towards the top end of that range. Now, this is a slide which shows what we have actually been doing in recent times. And as I said, we've been focusing very heavily on becoming a consistent producer and to bring our, our cost base down fairly slowly. So, you know, the variation, the slight variation that you see is largely a function of the grade of where we're mining. This current quarter, we should end up somewhere around here. So it's certainly a, a been a, a strong performance over the last couple of years, which is a little bit uh, different to when we first started up. People who, who know our history, know that the, the beginning of Perseus was a little bit up and down, but certainly over the last couple of years, we've successfully transitioned to a multi-mine, multi-jurisdictional uh, business, and we produce our, our, our uh, gold uh, month in, month out without much of a, uh, a variation. That results in this, particularly in a, in a price environment such as we're seeing at the moment in very strong uh, cash generation and, and strong balance sheet. So at the end of the last quarter, we were in, in, in very good shape given that where we are at the moment in terms of uh, the spend on the Aori project. Now, looking to the future, we, we have as a corporate objective to put, put ourselves in a position to produce a half a million ounces of gold a year at a cash margin of not less than $400 per ounce from 2022 onwards. That's our objective. And what we're setting our we're very, very close to, uh, to being in a position to do that, as I said earlier. And we're, in, we're working very hard at, at making sure that that can be sustained over the long term so that when investors invest in Perseus, they know what they're getting and they can rely on the outcomes, in particular rely on dividend streams from the company. If we look in the, in the fairly near term at, at the guidance, as I said, we've, we've guided 125 to 139,000 ounces for this half year. I've got absolute uh, full confidence that not only will we achieve guidance, but we will uh, be very well positioned in that range, possibly uh, at the top of the range, if not over. So things, things are traveling very, very well at the two operations. Um, neither of them, uh, uh, you know, uh, without challenge, but nevertheless, we're, we're going very well and, and well and truly on the track to, to, uh, to achieving our goal. Now this chart here shows exactly what we can achieve from the, our existing reserve base. Now, um, this, this, this uh, slide does not assume any mineral resource, it, uh, um, inferred resource. It doesn't assume any exploration success. This is what we've got on the books as it stands today. And you can see that we're well and truly uh, on the path to get to the 500,000 ounces and hold it out for at least four to five years. The key to this achieving, achievement is successful operation. And, and the assets that we're going to be achieving it from are the suite that we have. So Sasingi, Edikan, and Yayori. Now, just running through each of these fairly quickly, um, as we have two mines producing at the present time. Um, Sasingi, which is a relatively short life uh, at the moment, but the, the recent acquisition of Exor will materially add to the life of that particular operation. The other property is Edican. It's about a seven and a half to eight year proposition at the moment, although once again, working to extend that. Now, Edican, as I say, it was our first mine. It's a, it's a large scale, multi-pit, relatively low grade operation. We've produced about 1.7 million ounces from there to date. It's been, its cost structure is, is uh, elevated. It's around the thousand plus ounces. So it means we have to work very hard at, uh, at ensuring that we, we keep our cost base under control and we generate cash. And I'm very happy to say that uh, we have been doing that uh, you know, for quite some time now. And that while Edican is not a necessarily a tier one asset, it is a fairly reliable producer of gold and cash flow for the company. We also have some exploration ground very adjacent to Edican that I'm going to talk about in just a few moments that uh, potentially could add the life, add quite a bit to the life. The second mine is the Singi. This was brought online in about uh, January 18, and it's been punching above its weight ever since then. We've produced about a quarter of a million ounces from there to date and uh, paid back the entire capital investment in 26 months. It is, it's a first class operation, uh, this one. It, it, it's been achieving all of the, uh, the, uh, the KPIs that we set ourselves right from the get go and certainly been delivering uh, what we expected it to do. And that is give Fle Perseus the flexibility of having a second income stream and uh, a, a second production line and a, and, a, and a spread of risk across our businesses. As has been mentioned uh, once or twice, uh, we, we recently acquired Exor Resources. That's a company that holds 
a fairly held, held a fairly sizable uh, land package very adjacent to the Sasingi mine. And uh, we've been drilling on that, uh, that land ever since we've completed the acquisition in September. And uh, we'll be bringing a feasibility study forward in, in the first quarter of next year that will uh, allow us then, uh, subject to government approval, to, to mine uh, ore and truck that up to the Sasingi operation for quite a number of years to come. So Sasingi is looking extremely strong. The most exciting thing, I guess, for us right now is our third mine, which is in development. This is the Ayori project. This is a project that we acquired from uh, Amara Mining back in 2016. It's a technically very uh, robust operation. It'll be about three and a half million, 3.3 million tonne per annum operation when it's running fully, producing around 215,000 ounces of gold a year at a, an all in site cost of roughly $750 an ounce. So it's it's a combination of Edicand and Sasingi in a sense. It's a large scale, but relatively low cost and high grade operation. So it's uh, it's a, it's one that we're looking forward to. Now, we're in the latter stages of, uh, of development there. So uh, it's going extremely well, in fact. And uh, I did have a small video to play you this morning, but technology's got the better of me, I'm sorry. But, uh, but anyway, what we... Um, what we can say is that we've been putting ore through the through the crusher at uh, at uh, Yayori now for a week or so, starting to build up the crushed ore stockpile. Uh, as of uh, I think uh, around lunchtime today, we'll be ready to accept full mains power, and uh, the timing of that turning on of the switch will be a function of when the uh, the Ivorian politicians decide it's a good thing to do. But certainly, uh, as soon as that is available to us, we'll be putting ore into the mill. And our target, our stretch target of producing gold this calendar year is well and truly within our and within our grasp. And in fact, we think it'd be a very nice Christmas present for all of our shareholders to be producing first gold prior to Christmas. But uh, we'll need to wait and see. Certainly, the uh, the the run through the commissioning to date has been terrific. Uh, there's been no no hiccups at all. Everything's running very smoothly. The tailings dam has been completed and has a, a certificate of practical completion issued on it. Um, as I say, electricity has been been brought to the to the uh, well. The all the infrastructure for electricity is in place, and it's just a question of turning on the switches for mains power. We've been doing the commissioning to date on standby generators, so there's plenty of power uh, for our needs at the present time. But we would like to get on with the fully laden mill, and uh, it is an extremely uh, exciting time for us. And certainly by the end of this year, we believe that they'll have that third mine up and running and be you know, on the way to be uh, producing the uh, 500,000 ounces a year that we, uh, we were seeking to do. Now, one of the things I would say is that I'd like to take the opportunity to commend my development team because they have done an outstanding job in this COVID climate, uh, bringing this project in ahead of schedule and under budget with uh, you know, all of the challenges that, that came with COVID, I think is a, is a magnificent uh, achievement. And I think that uh, the boys are to be, uh, and girls are to be congratulated for, for really sticking out, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the task in difficult circumstances and delivering very, very strongly for us. If we look to the future, though, and many people say to me, well, that's great. I'm glad you've got Yayori, you know, into production. So what's next? What's the, what's the new party trick? Well, for us at the moment, we're, we're looking to continue to grow the company and to continue that 500,000 ounce level of production for many years to come. Right now, we're focusing on, on growth through organic means rather than through acquisition. And that means achieving exploration success. And we've got opportunities at each of our properties, and I'll run through them fairly briefly to just give you a bit of an insight into what we're thinking. Now, if we look at the Edican uh, operation, for instance, you can see this yellow uh, uh, tier coming through here. This is the main structure that runs through through uh, Ghana. Up to the north is the Abwasi mine, down to the south are the Golden Stars mines. And where we've been mining on this particular trend, the conventional wisdom was this is where the gold was, and to the north here was, was barren. This is a big sedimentary basin that carried no gold. What we've been noticing since we've been operating along here is that the artisanal miners didn't take a whole lot of notice of conventional wisdom and have been out in this area uh, for the last few years mining significant amounts of gold off the, the surface material from the uh, alluvial cover that sits out there. So we've been out there uh, to take a close look and lo and behold, with the uh, cover taken off, you can see very, very significant uh, structures, very similar to what we're mining over here, large granite deposits. And this uh, photograph here is actually one of the, the pits that's been mined by the artisanal miners. And 
our fellows have been down there and have identified a number of structures, look very closely at the rocks and they're extremely similar to those that we've been mining for a number of years here in the AF Gap and as far as your pits. So we've, uh, this year we've been steadily accumulating land um, around this area here. There are some well identified trends through this area and we're very, very keen to get on and start, uh, start drilling these areas. And we think that there is enormous potential for repetitions of these large granite ore bodies sitting out in this part of the world. Now, in the meantime, we're, we're, we've been also uh, oper uh, exploring to, to the south of, uh, of the, uh, the, the plant down here at Mampong. We've just, uh, we've got, you know, a significant number of intercepts here, and you can see from the chart there, some pretty interesting grades coming through. We've just completed a, a, a final 22 hole program uh, now, and we'll be sitting back in the next couple of weeks, uh, looking at exactly what that is. And I suspect strongly, although it needs to be proven, that the next step will be an infill drill program here and we'll have another mine, another pit to mine uh, for the Etican operation. So Singi has, has an awful lot of gold located around it. And we've been you know, working over this ground for, for many, many years and have not been able to materially add to the uh, inventory. We have picked up the Fimbiaso uh, deposits, but we haven't been able to add materially to the Singi deposits uh, and extend the mine life as yet. What we did do, as I've said earlier, is acquire the, um, the uh, uh, Exor uh, properties. So from this chart, the gray areas are the land, land holdings that we have, red is Exor. And we've been, um, we acquired that recently and have been drilling that uh, since we acquired it. And, and as I say, we're, we're making very good progress through here, through, through uh, Veronique. This is down here. We'll be heading to Juliet in a week or so's time and then up to Antoinette. And by the end of this year, we will have completed the program. We'll have a, all the data together to do an updated mineral resource and, uh, and, uh, and a reserve estimation, and then put that into a feasibility study. You can see from the slide there that Exor had announced a 500 odd ounce uh, resource there when they, they had the property. We're not sure whether it's as big as that or not, but certainly the drilling we'll do, we're doing, we'll find that out. Probably the best exploration potential for really making a big difference around uh, Perseus is, is, at, is at Yayori. There's an enormous amount of uh, potential and we've been drilling a number of these deposits recently. Uh, Angovia too, we're actually doing resource definition drilling. We've got some very uh, interesting targets in the, uh, in down to the south here. We're looking at the CMA extension of the CMA pit. And I think that, you know, you can see from some of these intercepts that, and that's not a typo by the way, 183. Uh, grams a ton, that's, uh, that's a, an actual intercept. Um, there's certainly a lot of gold down here and we think that we'll be able to bring our, our investors news of, uh, of a substantial increase in the resource inventory uh, before too much longer. One of the things that we did do when we're doing the feasibility study was identify that there was potential to mine uh, underground because the, the structure uh, goes down dip from here. And we, we estimated a mineral resource of about 600, five, 600,000 ounces that we could mine from underground uh, methods just using the drill database that existed to date. What we wanted to do though was to find out exactly how far that went. And we've done a, a three-dimensional survey using the uh, technology developed here in Western Australia by High Size. They've completed their work and done a three-dimensional model. And this is a, a cross, the first cross-section that we received from them. But what this indicates to us is that the, the CMA structures and the Y structures that we're mining in the CMA and the AORA pits do that extend down at depth. And not only that, we have repetitions of the structure heading closer to the surface. We have back thrusts. We have an enormous uh, granite intrusion, which provides the, uh, the heat and the fluids that have brought the gold to this part of the, uh, the air, uh, tenement and have forced it up through the, through the various structures. So what we're, we're looking forward very, very much to can continue the drilling of these structures. And we believe that with a, a modicum of exploration success, we're going to have a, a very substantial increase to the, uh, to the reserve at, at, at uh, Yayori for many, many years to come. Our focus has been, been around the, the CMA and Yayori pits in the, in the recent history, but stepping out from there, we also have all of this land and there's an enormous uh, number of uh, mineral expressions out here that are yet to be fully explored. So our confidence in extending our ability to produce the 500,000 ounces a year uh, for many, many years to come is well founded. And I think the company is in extremely good shape to, uh, to deliver that. And most importantly, 
is that we have a very strong social license to operate in this part of the world, having dedicated a good deal of time and effort to, to working on this over many, many years. Our relationships are extremely strong at both community level and at government level uh, with our workforce and with our suppliers of goods and services. So I think the company is in extremely good shape from that perspective. And we are looking forward to bringing many, many uh, years of, of strong, consistent performance uh, generation of cash flow and payment of dividends to our shareholders. So with that, I think uh, I'll, I'll uh, stop the presentation and perhaps open the floor for questions. Thank you so much for that, Jeff. Uh, Perseus's past two quarters in particular um, have, have been quite strong and you've seen increased gold production. Does the company expect to continue this trend in the current quarter and into calendar year 2021? Yeah, no, certainly uh, we, we, we do actually. Um, I think this quarter will be stronger than the previous quarter. And then, of course, uh, Yayori will be contributing um, to, to the overall equation from this quarter onwards. And so, yes, absolutely, the, uh, the, um, the profile will continue to increase. I mean, I showed the slide that, um, you know, shows our, our pr pr um, projected pr production for the next five years. Um, you know, we're sitting in fiscal 21, that bar there, which is the Aori contribution will probably be a little bit higher than that. So that's what fiscal 2021 will deliver, 22 is there. So as of the end of this year with the Aori running, we're well and truly on the track to be delivering in line with that growth curve. And on that note of Aori, maybe if you can stay on this slide, uh, will, will the Aori be achieving its first goal next month if you, if you are well and truly ahead? Uh, we believe so, yes, indeed. I mean, we'll be putting in ore into the mill um, in the next few days, one would like to think. And of course, as that goes into the mill, the process of recovery starts right then and there. And I would say, though, in, in fairly small quantities, because quite clearly you don't put your best ore in first while you're commissioning. But certainly we'll be starting to recover gold uh, in uh, the latter stages of November and December, and we'll be pouring sometime in December. You recently completed the acquisition of Exor Resources, which you, which you did speak about in quite a lot of detail, including its Bago bag, project. What's the next step for that project? Well, as I say, we're drilling that right now. And by the end of the year, that program will be finished. We'll then do a, a resource estimate, put together a feasibility study and make an application for a mining lease to the government in, in, uh, in uh, Cote d'Ivoire. Now, um, you know, that'll probably take a year or so to come through, but we would, we would like to think that within a, a year to 18 months of now, we'll be in a position to uh, start mining ore from Bago, um, either Veronica or all of Veronique, Antoinette and Juliet, and be hauling that up the road to the Sisingi Mill. Great, thanks, Jeff. And do you have any closing remarks before we wrap up for today? Yes, I will just in, in, uh, in conclusion. Look, it's a very, very exciting time for us here at Perseus. Uh, it has been a bit of a journey over the years to get to where we are. And we thank very much our shareholders who have supported us very strongly um, all that, along that journey. And I should say, we also thank uh, Nathan Ryan and his team have also been uh, strong supporters of the company. But notwithstanding the fact that we've, we've had our ups and downs along the way, we are, the transition is, is well and truly on the way right now. We are a multi-mine multi-jurisdictional uh, mid-tier gold producer and we are in, in a situation where we can produce quarter in, quarter out and be relied upon to generate the returns that investors are looking for. So with that, we're, we, you know, we are in very good, good, good position and I think that this is a, uh, a, an investment, a company that, that shareholders would be uh, well served to take a very close look at. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you so much, Jeff, and thanks everyone for joining.